Jana Jan Tuma. A spolu jsme ve většině případů komunikovali. Dovolte mi, abych vám představil dvě zástupkyně společnosti Aviation CV, Irmu a Alínu. Poprosili mě, abych nevyslovoval jejich příjmení, protože je hodně složitý. A budou vám tady teď následující asi tak zhruba hodinku prezentovat možnosti pracovních nabídek a uplatnění jak pro absolventy typových kvalifikací, tak pro piloty už s náletem, protože sešla se vás tady taková směs, že jsou tady lidé jak s novými zkušenostmi v letectví, kteří ještě nevítají, tak ti, kteří jsou po typové kvalifikaci, tak i lidé s náletem. Takže tahle ta prezentace bude určena, věřím, pro co největší počet z vás a Až tady dámy dokončí prezentaci, včetně té diskuze s vámi, už budete mít tak několik dotazů, tak se budete ptát. A potom bych si vzal s dovolením slovo jenom já, asi na 10, maximálně 15 minut, abych vás moc nezatížil a jenom vám řekl něco málo o možnostech, které máte tady v CATC. A pro ty, kdo jste tady poprvé, tak abyste věděli, kde vlastně jste a s tím máte tady tu čest. Takže vám přeju příjemný zážitek, nebo jak to říct, a díte se. Okay, so uh, once again, my name is Irma, and I'm a senior sales manager in the company Aviation CV. And this is Alina, my colleague. She is HR manager, so actually all the recruitment process and selection process is going through her. I'm hunting for the contracts for the clients, and Alina then is, of course, there are more HR managers and more salespersons in Aviation CV. So first thing that we wanted you to know is about our company. Uh, because I do believe that not many of you have heard about us. Uh, we come first of all from Lithuania, uh, from Baltic country. And Aviation CV is already for three years we are a uh, leading and global provider of aviation personnel. It's both <coughs> pilots, flight attendants, engineers and technicians. And we started working with uh, uh, really large players in the market like Etihad Airways, uh, Lion Air, Asiana, major Chinese airlines and many more. Ryanair as well, we su support Ryanair with maintenance. And uh, why it's uh, good for you to work with us is because it's not that we just have your CVs in our database and just send you emails and that's it. Uh, we prefer actually personal communication uh, we always call you by the phone, we see how you feel about the offer, if we have something to offer for you. And of course, the most important thing is that we take care of you 24-7. It means that uh, if you have been employed through a certain HR manager like Alina or like the others, it means that you can call that person like 24-7. So for example, if you have been sent to some kind of base and you have some problems over there, like you don't like the hotel or there is no hotel at all, as it was promised, so of course it's us who will help you all the time and fix the problems. Uh, also, uh, talking about the vision, we, we are not just small, some kind of recruitment agency sitting in small office and uh, doing stuff. Uh, we are part of a big family called the Avia Solutions Group. I don't know if you have heard, but it's actually the largest provider of aviation-related services in the Baltic region. So we have quite a lot of companies under our umbrella, so it's like FL Techniques uh, doing the maintenance not only in Lithuania but also in Indonesia and United Kingdom. Uh, then we have Herisota, it's helicopter maintenance company. Then we have also Locator. Locator is an internet platform for uh, spare parts. Baltic Aviation Academy is like simply like, like this. Uh, it's a pilot training center. We have two simulators, A320 and B737 Classic. Mm -hmm. So we do alpha type waiting and um, there. Then we have like a new member joining our company group is uh, Class Jet. It's a business jet uh, airline. At the moment we have two business jets, but we are planning in two years to extend the fleet until 10. Uh, then it's Aviation CV, which I already told you about. Then we have also Baltic Ground Services and uh, the most new project is Ramport, uh, where Aviation, uh, Avia Solutions Group is building the fourth airport in Moscow. We have won the competition and we are the ones who are building the airport in Moscow. So uh, here you can see the main uh, partners that we are working with. It's not only Aviation CV, but it's entire Avia Solutions Group. 
and we are trusted right by really quite a big list of uh, famous and well-known operators, producers, airlines. Uh, yeah, we move to the next one. And this is uh, mainly the clients of uh, Aviation CV. And now before we move to the next step, I wanted to ask how many here are captains? Could you please raise your hands? Okay, three. Uh, first officers, that rated first officers? Okay, what about the rest? <laughs> are you wannabe pilots or you have ATPL frozen? Just studying the ATPL. Just studying the ATPL, okay. Okay, so because now uh, the next uh, thing uh, we're going to introduce is the line training programs which we have. <coughs> and we can move to another slide, thank you. So we provide line training for two types, it's for V7 through 7 Classic and for A320. Uh, 7 through 7 Classic is done with Enter Air in Poland, it's our partner. And A320 is done with a small planet airlines, which is uh, our, they used to belong to Avia Solutions Group, but now they left the group, but still we are in very close cooperation with them. And uh, well, how it works? Uh, of course, we accept only type rated pilots. Uh, before, when we started three years ago, we were also uh, were given type rating plus the line training. Uh, but now we actually decided to, to give only the, uh, the line training, which is 500 block hours. But yeah, it's true that you pay us the money and we let you fly, but actually this program is very popular and we don't have that many uh, vacancies uh, during the year. It's for A through 20 and for around 10 slots and for A, uh, 7 through 7 also around slots per year. But the program is really, really popular. And as soon as we just announced the programs in our web, web page, so it's just crazy. The phones are ringing and the emails are just flooding into the <laughs> inbox. And just briefly about how it works so that uh, you apply. Of course, we have certain requirements, which I will mention later. Uh, then there is a screening. The screening uh, consists of uh, <coughs> uh, the interview, of course, and the signature. Sorry. Okay, can I continue? Okay, so uh, the SIM check. And then if you pass everything, then we sign the contract for four years. It means that for one year you will be flying the 500 hours. Um, I will tell you later what the basis are. Uh, yeah, for A320 the basis are in, uh, uh, in Vilnius. And for 7 through 7 the in Vilnius, Lithuania. And for 7 through 7 it's going to be in Poland. And so it's 10 months, but of course it depends on the operations, on demand of the operations, because both of the airlines are charter airlines, so they cannot guarantee you there is stable. But 10 years, uh, 10 months, 11 months, and then you'll gain your 500 block hours. And then, uh, yeah, later I will tell about the cost. And later, so the cost is, so for V7 through 7 line training, it's 40,000 euros, the total amount, uh, where, uh, it's 50,000 50, euros for the V737 uh, line training, uh, where you have to pay in advance 40,000 euros, and the rest is uh, 10,000 is like a loan from Aviation CV. So it means that for the first year, you don't pay back the loan, and uh, after you gain your 500 hours, uh, you start working, and you start paying back the loan in small installments, like, for example, you get the credit from the bank. You start paying back the loan, for example, if you have no job for one month, for two months, then you stop paying back the loan. And so you have to return the loan in four years. And of course, it's our job to, it's our obligation to, to help you to find the job after you get the 500 hours. And actually, this is the main reason why we're accepting the pilots, the ones who already have as much as possible total time. Because, for example, if you will have 500 on time, but 700 total, well, still, it doesn't work that much in, in aviation because I do believe all of you know what are the requirements. For example, minimum requirements of total time might be 1,500 or 1,000 at least. And the price of A320 line training program is, um, 
is the price is the same, but uh, the down payment uh, is three, uh, thirty thousand euros, and the loan from Aviation CV is twenty thousand euros. <coughs> so it's actually what I I mentioned before. Uh, before, while you are not working, you don't have to pay back the loan. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so this is uh, the main requirements. I believe that all of you need them. But like I told before, uh, the, there will be more chances for you to get the job if you will have as much possible total time. I mean, on all the small aircrafts. 500 hours in type and then uh, 1,000, 1,500. Then, of course, it's very easy and really high, highly possible to get the job. Okay, now Alina will present because she's a chair manager and she knows all the requirements and the salary details. So she will present now the job offers that we have. Uh, we have most of our job offers, maybe around 80% of the job offers are for the captains. And well, some of them are for first officers. And those who are still planning to become pilots, of course, I believe it's going to be interesting for you as well because you will see uh, what are the possibilities, what are the opportunities, uh, the salaries, for example, in different parts of the world, because we have job offers worldwide, it's not only in some one region. Okay, Lina, so... Um, okay. okay. Uh, so, uh, we can start from the job offers in Europe. Uh, so, as my colleague mentioned, Small Planet Airlines. At this point, they are looking for a through 20 captains and a B737 classic captains. Uh, for the A320, the bases would be mainly in Poland, in Katowice, Gdańsk, Warsaw, and also there is a possibility to be based in London. For the 737 captains, uh, the bases would be in Verona on Ma or Manchester. The contract is quite short, it's only until the end of September. And the salary, uh, well, it's not the biggest in the market. Uh, it's 5,000 euro, and for the first officers, it's uh, 3,600. At this point, they stopped application for the first officers. However, they might renew it again. Uh, the roster would be non commuting. The requirements so for the uh, captains, it's 3,000, 3.5, and, uh, and 800, 1,000 on type and last flight within a year. Uh, for the first officers, uh, it's uh, around 500 on time and last flight uh, within last uh, six months. Uh, so it's an opportunity to actually get uh, around 500 hours and uh, actually a couple of our pilots who were employed as the first officers they gained a lot of experience, they were flying, and then they actually reached the amount of total hours, 1,000 hours total. Because a lot of airlines require at least 500 on type, and total hours at least 1,000. In this case, small planet airlines, they accept pilots with 500 on type. But the other, other airlines are more strict about this requirement. So yes, I understand that this uh, might not be the dream offer, However, you can gain some experience and then, for example, one of the pilots uh, passed the screening in Hong Kong where the salary is, uh, well, it's uh, pretty great. So, uh, let's move on. Well, closer to Europe would be job offers in Turkey. Uh, there are two companies. Uh, first is Sun Express and the other is uh, Turkish Airlines. Uh, both of them accept uh, type rated as well as non-type rated uh, captains and the Turkish Airlines also first officers. For the Sun Express, uh, the basis would be in Antalya or Izmir. The contract length uh, one year for the type rated and two for the non-type rated. Uh, the salary uh, will actually depends on your experience, but it is around uh, 6,500 euros net. Uh, the roster is uh, uh, commuting uh, or non-commuting, it would be up to you to choose. Uh, the requirements are higher, they require uh, 4,000 hours in total, uh, 500 uh, in command. Uh, so this is also the option uh, for, for this offer, type rated and non-type rated. 
Uh, well, of course, for the non-tapered, they require experience on aircrafts uh, in excess of 27 uh, tons. So if you have any questions, just do not be afraid to interrupt and just ask. Yeah, because ask. actually we thought it's better to ask the questions now because there are quite a number of offers. So if you have a question on the first offer, you might forget your questions until we go to the end. Yes. So no questions about okay. Express. Okay. Uh, so the next step would be um, Turkish Airlines. I believe you all heard about this airline. It's expanding quite uh, fast and it requires a lot of captains, first officers, A320, B737, and G777, uh, <coughs> A330, 340 uh, and also they accept non-tape rated. So just uh, start from A320. Uh, the start is as soon as possible. The screenings for this offer are almost every Monday. Uh, it's a group uh, uh, assessment, uh, interview, simulator check, uh, medical check, uh, well, as usual. Uh, after you pass the screening, they usually would like you to start the contract after one month. Uh, the contract length is uh, permanent, uh, so you will have a permanent position in this company. And if you start as a first officer, there is a seniority program in order to be upgraded to the captain's position. Uh, the salary would be uh, for the, um, the narrow body, it would be around nine and a half thousand uh, dollars. The roster patterns are two, five days on, two days off, or six day on, one day off. Uh, they can actually uh, discuss with you the possibility of uh, four days uh, off in a row just to maybe come back home uh, for the holidays or uh, something like that. In this case, the requirements uh, go even higher than the Eastern Express. Uh, they require for the captains uh, at least five and a half thousand total flight hours, and three thousand of them on the aircrafts over 27 tons. And of course, uh, they all of the offers require captain hours on the actual type applied for. Uh, they changed the requirements because regarding the last flight, uh, for not so long ago, it was um, uh, well, all of the captains and first officers, in order to get the better job offers, has to stay current on time. Uh, and in this case, before they required last flight to be within the last six months, and now it's within the last 12 months. Uh, so they need a lot of pilots, so they just decreased their requirements regarding this in this case. Uh, for the first officers, so the basically conditions of the offer uh, are the same, uh, but uh, of course the salary is uh, different, it's uh, $6,100. Uh, the roster is also different from the captains, uh, well it's actually according to the company procedures, so uh, when is the high season you fly a lot, uh, when is the lower season you don't fly that much, uh, but there is no well, a schedule that we could present. It would be up to the company. Uh, regarding requirements, so it would be uh, one and a half thousand uh, on aircraft more than 27 tons. Uh, so, well, for the Turkish Airlines and the uh, other, they accept um, your experience uh, on aircraft with more than 27 tons. Well, sometimes pilots have uh, a lot of experience, but it's on the small aircraft. And this is a big problem problem in this case. And uh, well, 1,000 hours on applied aircraft. Well, regarding last flight, uh, I told you. Well, as I mentioned, they accept uh, also cap type rated A330, A340, and triple seven, uh, as well as uh, non-type rated. Uh, they have a list of the aircrafts from which you can convert uh, to the wide body, and from which aircrafts you can convert to narrow body. Well, the salary would be for the first officer is the same. Doesn't matter if you fly on a 737 on a or on a triple seven. For the captains, uh, it's a higher salary. It's uh, almost 11, uh, and the roster. Well, there is actual roster. It's uh, three weeks on, one week off. So it's quite friendly in this case. Uh, jobs in Asia. And by the way, maybe you had any questions about Turkish or? No, okay. So jobs in Asia. So
so Asiana, this is my client, so I will tell a little bit about this. And actually, we have the screenings uh, every month, uh, around every middle of every month. So next screening will be in February 16th, 17th, 18th. And they also accept uh, looking also 8 through 20 captains and first officers. So if anyone who wants to apply, so you are very welcome to do that because as I told you, the next screening is very soon. And of course, the deadline of application is the end of this month. So yeah, everybody I believe you know Asiana Airlines, they are really big, really stable, their aircrafts are not falling down. And uh, the, it's in South Korea, the base is in Seoul. Uh, the contract is for three years. Uh, the basic salary is 6000 almost $7,000 plus allowances. Uh, before they wanted uh, the pilots <coughs> to pay the taxes, but uh, because of the shortage of the pilots, Asiana recently decided to, to, to pay the taxes instead of the pilots, on behalf of the pilots. Uh, it's a, actually, it's a commuting actually contract because still you get eight non-consecutive days off and 12 consecutive days every two months. Uh, so the age limit, as you can see, is 57 years for the captains. And the requirements, the hour requirements are not that big. And uh, also the last flight, the required last flight is only six months. So it's really good offer. And we have quite a lot of captains uh, who are interested. Uh, yes, and as I told you, we also, they're looking for other types of, also first officers. Uh, the age limit for the first officer is 45. And so the salary is like for the first officer is 4,500 uh, plus allowances. Also, I forgot to mention that, of course, they do provide the accommodation, uh, they provide the flight <coughs> tickets, and the screening, <coughs> the screening is held in Seoul. Um, but of course, they do provide the tickets on Asiana network for, to go for the screening. And of course, the accommodation is provided during, during the screening as well. So you don't have to pay for anything. And so as you can see, they are also looking for B767 captains, A330 captains, and 747 first officers. So if you know any friends who have these type ratings and who are looking for the job, so yeah, you can easily tell them about these job offers that Asiana has. <coughs> it's yours. Uh, yes, um, also regarding the screenings uh, for the small planet, uh, actually we just received information today that the next screening will probably be in here in Prague. Uh, so if any one of you would be actually interested or know someone who might be, so just we can share information and maybe just go for the screening here. And Well, actually you won't have to go anywhere, just uh, go. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the offer in China for the Hong Kong uh, Express. At this point they are looking for uh, A320 captains as well as first officers. Uh, the salary is very attractive there. It's uh, up to $16,000 uh, for the captains and uh, for the first officers it's up to $10,000. Uh, of course, it's include uh, a lot of benefits and less uh, relocation allowance, medical insurance, accident insurance. Also, there are bonuses. Uh, actually, each year uh, on the first year it's around uh, six and a half, and on the third year it's actually twenty thousand uh, dollars per year. Uh, so they just want to motivate you and thank you for the uh, cooperation and your service in their airline. So uh, this is an interesting <coughs> uh, contract to consider, I think. Uh, the requirements. Mm, oh, also the salary uh, depends on your experience. Uh, more experience you have, the uh, higher is your salary. Uh, regarding requirements, they also have uh, some uh, well, different requirements. For the captains, it's uh, at least uh, 3,000 in total and 500 on type. But in this case, it's within the last five years. So they don't have a requirements like in for the last flight in last three months uh, because it's important to stay current and if you miss that chance you can still uh, try with Hong Kong Express if you have a valid OPC LPC. Uh, for the first officers the uh, requirement is 1000 total and 500 on type. However, if uh, some of the pilots uh, 
or if someone has 900 hours in total or 950 they still might consider your application in this case they are quite flexible regarding the hours um, Okay, so it's my, my client again. So it's Lionier, it's one of the largest uh, air carriers, yes? Yeah, I have an experience uh, returning uh, to China uh, to fly somewhere from the Czech Republic because you are offering something which is impossible almost. Actually, uh, Hong Kong is different, it's not yeah, China. Yeah, there is a problem. Uh, did you try to apply exa exactly to Hong Kong? You know, the problem is with, with China, and uh, I'm not quite sure about Hong Kong. That's yes, my, exactly. Exactly. Uh, we have inf we are working with Chinese market constantly. Okay. Yeah, and but we, we didn't include this in yes. the presentation because we know that they do not accept Czech pilots. But yeah. we included Hong Kong because yes, do. it's actually different from the rest of the Chinese you know, market. You know, the China, they have opened up uh, for the Czech pilots also, and uh, I believe from Romania, uh, there is a list of countries which are open for China. But for the time being, you know, the uh, the cooperation of not very smooth, so it was my question if you are familiar with this. Yes. And uh, if you if you proceed in work, if you have any experience with Yes, we are actually working with uh, quite a number of Chinese airlines. It's all the major Chinese airlines we are working with. Of course, first of all, they didn't accept the Greek pilots. Then uh, again, the rumors came that they already do accept, but uh, once we send the candidates, they still reject them. It's really, really difficult with Chinese airlines. It's just because of the background check? It's, well, it's because of everything. First of all, of course, there is the white list of the countries that they only accept. And uh, for some reasons, they don't accept normal countries. Uh, and the next thing is, it's the check. It's a medical check, which is totally different than the one we have here in Europe. Um, then, of course, uh, all the simulated check, because their mentality is different. Of course, the ones who get in, they are happy. They are happy, but still, most of the pilots they they work there for some time because the money is really good over there, and the living costs in China are really low. And so, say they save lots of money, they gain lots of hours, and then they, of course, looking for the jobs closer to their homes. Well, why exactly some of the countries are on the white list, on the black list? Well, of course, they won't disclose it to us. You know, it's they, sorry. Of course, continue. You know, the main problem with this is uh, because there is security check. Yes. And there is no cooperation between the governments. The so if, if yes. the China will request uh, the security check on the Czech Republic, the Czech Republic doesn't have any issues why they should send uh, to them the security check. Yes. Uh, and I believe that now it's, it's open, it's, uh, which what says it's, it's like for 14 days or a month, it is open for the check also. Actually, it was with the uh, pilots from the Belgium. Uh, it was the same, it was one day it was okay, they accept Belgians to collect the documents and application, receive information, then no, 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 no for the Belgians. And then the next day we speak with the pilot, explain the situation, and then of course it's once again, they, they're in the process of uh, starting cooperation, uh, giving, yes, actually I now remember that situation, so it's constantly changing. Within there are a lot of countries that are on different level of the well, of course, connection with China and uh, so on. So uh, the lists are changing constantly. However, Hong Kong is different, and a lot. Well, actually, one of the uh, guys from the Belgium, he applied, uh, I think, almost for all the Chinese airlines, and they were so picky and was <coughs> just said no, and then he just applied for Hong Kong, and it was uh, okay. Of well, course, yes, Chinese, they are yeah. picky in general. Just remember when they rejected one of the, our pilots just because he was too fat. And of course, it was a normal the current pilot working for the other airlines, and he wasn't too fat for those airlines that he was working for. Uh, but for Chinese, somehow, he was too fat. So, so this is how it is. Well, of course, uh, working in China is quite a challenge because, you know, it's, uh, of course, we communicate with pilots who are working there, who were working there, so we know the stories. Uh, they say it's really challenging because of different mentality. It's not only the people that live around you, but it's also, also the colleagues in the company, the management, the, the first officers, co-pilots, flight attendants. 
Uh, also the fines, uh, they are really strict. For example, we heard a story from one pilot who uh, forgot to wear his hat during the flight and he got a fine and the fine was that he didn't receive his full month's salary. So, <coughs> this is China. But if you receive a full month's salary, well, it's a quite it's great big one. salary. <laughs> yes, so I think the best thing that sells Chinese offers is the salary. Mm -hmm. If you want to earn money, you go there. And for the non-commuting option, just for a year or more. So, we can continue that. Okay, so now I will continue with Lion Air. Lion Air is uh, another big uh, airline in uh, Indonesia. They also don't fall. Well, actually, they had one aircraft fall in the, the summer, but nothing serious happened. So, um, so we have this offer for 737NG captains. Well, actually, we have two. So first one is for the NG captains, as you can see. Uh, the salary depends on the, the experience. So if you have more than 1,000 hours, you would be paid $8,000 per month. And uh, $7,000 you would be paid if you have less than 1,000 uh, dollars. One important <coughs> thing that we forgot to mention is that all the salaries that are mentioned here, they are tax-free. Uh, for example, I mean, what I mean by tax-free, it means that the sum that you can see here is that the amount that will be transferred to your account. And of course, if you will have to pay the income tax, it's the matter of your authorities. Uh, some of the, most of the pilots actually, in, uh, in order to avoid the taxes, they open the accounts in different countries. Like Cambodia, Singapore, and the first, it's no, no big difference where to transfer the salary. Because some of the contracts are where you would be as a contractor, it means that you would be leased pilot, aviation CV will have with you a uh, service agreement, you will be a service provider, and you would be leased to an airline. And for some of the companies, you would be employed directly with them. So, for example, with Lion Air, you would uh, be a contractor, a leased pilot. And so you, you can see here the, uh, the main requirements. Also, this uh, option here has a roster. So it's uh, during the training, uh, 16 weeks on, two weeks off. And after that one, it's already 10 weeks on and two weeks off. So and again, accommodation is provided, allowances for the flight tickets is also provided. And there is another thing that they offer now, because uh, they are quite short of the captains, they offer a captain of grade program for the first officers. Uh, the program is, consists of five years, and so as you can see the requirements are like 3,000 uh, uh, total, where 1,000 should be logged on in 737 FSRNG. Uh, so basically the cost of this, <coughs> do we have the cost in the other slide? No. So the cost of this program is $18,000, which actually uh, will be, um, yes, actually, yes, it's uh, $18,000, which is not that uh, big amount, I do believe, uh, but it's really will be flying a lot, because in, in those uh, countries, it's, they are flying more than 80 hours per month. So it's a good opportunity to be upgraded to, to the captain and to log quite a lot of big hours. So uh, another our client is Air Astana. Well, <coughs> this client uh, is the oldest. We have the strong relationship with them. And uh, actually they went through some changes recently. And uh, they, uh, for example, changed the contract length from the uh, 392 days to three years with the possibility to extend. And also, uh, well, the salary here is uh, 6,000 euros plus 50 euros per day. And just today, a couple of hours ago, uh, we also received an update that they decided to increase the salary. So at this point, it would be uh, 6,500 euros as a basic salary and then plus uh, five and a half uh, hundred euros as a completion bonus per month. And of course there are per diems, uh, 50 euros per day. So the salary would actually uh, increase al almost a thousand uh, euros, more than a thousand euros actually. Uh, so because at this point there were a lot of A through 20 captains and of, uh, first they accepted only Europeans, European guys. And uh, at this point, 
uh, well, the need is quite huge and they started evaluating the other possibilities, even from Argentina and uh, uh, so on. If you meet the requirements, the requirements are, I think, uh, five and a half thousand total hours, 500 on type and uh, 1,500 on aircrafts, uh, more than 27 tons. Uh, so if you meet, oh, the age limit is, um, uh, I think it's 60 for the captains. And regarding the last flight, this airline accepts only the last flight being within the last three months. <coughs> uh, so uh, as I mentioned, it went through a lot of changes because they try to improve their contract to make it more attractive uh, not uh, only uh, for well for all of the pilots uh, just to go there and stay there uh, for as long as uh, they need uh, well they are trying uh, to do their best to attract pilots at this point <coughs> And actually, some of the pilots, well, most, a lot of our pilots were employed there, and they were really happy about the conditions. Well, actually, yes, because first of all, when they hear that the location will be in Kazakhstan, and if you try to offer this job for some Western European pilot, they all know, no, no, it's like Soviet Union country, and nobody wants to go there. But actually, Kazakhstan is uh, quite a rich country. They have quite lots of minerals and they drive the, the newest and most expensive cars in the city if you go there. So actually it's a really modern city, uh, friendly city and uh, country, I mean. And the pilots are really happy there because they get really good accommodations there. And the ones who enter, they really are willing to stay for a long time. Uh, well, uh, increase of the salary will officially apply from the March uh, 2015. Uh, so. Uh, okay, so if you won't have, if you don't have any questions, maybe at this point, no. Okay, so we continue then. So uh, Indigo, it's uh, one of the largest carriers in India, and uh, <coughs> at the moment, the, at the moment, well, constantly they are looking for E through twenty captains, TRIs, and TREs. Uh, as you can see, so the basic salaries is for the captain it's nine thousand uh, dollars net, so for TRI it's uh, ten thousand, and uh, for TRE it's eleven thousand dollars per month. Uh, again, uh, they uh, the maximum age limit for to apply for this position is fifty nine, which is quite a high uh, high limit because um, most of the airlines uh, they they have more strict standards. Uh, the problem with Indians is that, for example, if you never had experience with it, the recruitment process is quite long because, first of all, they require quite a long list of documents. Sometimes not even all the pilots have them. And then the security checks, they take some time. But again, uh, those pilots who are already in, they really love it. Of course, you have to be some kind of uh, lover of this kind of culture and everything because, again, it's different things over there. Uh, for example, uh, three years ago, I had a pilot uh, in one of Indian companies, and he escaped after one month. And I called him and said, "Timothy, what happened? Why did you leave the contract? You know, you were paid the money, you got accommodation, everything was fine." And the guy was—he was from the United States. And so the reason he left the contract was because uh, the chef in the hotel couldn't make him a proper chicken sandwich. So. <laughs> Well, but the others who are working there, it's, it's okay for them. So as I told you, so for Indigo, they are accepting pilots constantly. Of course, they do have a screening. First of all, it's a Skype interview, and then uh, they, again, they cover all the tickets and they cover accommodation <coughs> to come to India and to do the same check. Another offer in India uh, would be for the Jet Airways. At this point, it's on the standby. It's for 737NG captains, TRS, and TREs. Uh, the salaries would be from 9,500 USD uh, to uh, almost 11. Uh, the roster is quite friendly. Eight on uh, two weeks off. It's three years contract. It's renewable. Uh, well, it's uh, quite similar to Indigo. However, this is for the 737NG captains. Uh, well, as I mentioned, this one is on standby, however, it m they might renew the selection and if uh, anyone would be interested, 
no friends who might be just uh, and who are lovers of India uh, because uh, you have to actually love the country and understand the culture uh, because I was in contact with one of the captains there and he told me that yes it's India it smells it's not good it's not Europe of course uh, but they put you actually in a golden cage you have the perfect hotel the perfect service well not in uh, this case well maybe not the perfect sandwich <laughs> but uh, they really uh, take care of you it's like the city in a city for the expat pilots uh, so and he informed me that of course there are management uh, and sometimes you don't understand why they do things uh, differently because it's not reasonable uh, but uh, <coughs> you with Indians as he told me you have to see uh, the glass half full not half empty and uh, he told me that you can uh, earn like three hundred dollars per day doesn't matter if you fly all day or you lay on the beach and then he included the picture from his window. Well, actually, it was like a postcard. Mm. Uh, there were palm trees, the beach, the sunset. It was perfect. Uh, so it's not uh, only the bad things that we can see on TV and so on. Uh, that it's so poor. Yeah, <coughs> well, if you want to know what it's <coughs> in real life, you have to actually go there and try it, and not only listen to your friends. Because who knows, maybe you will like it. Well, but we have a contract scene in Pakistan and oh, yeah. people, they were just loved over there. I was actually afraid it was my client. Of course, now the, the, the contract is closed. But of course, Pakistan, what we think is about terrorists and all stuff over there. Of course, things happen. But really, we had European pilots, non-Muslim, but real European pilots going there. And they just loved it there. And of course, they almost were crying when the contract was over, actually. It's really strange. So like Alina said, you have to be, you, you have to love this kind of culture. And for those who love it, then they stay there forever. Another offer is uh, for the Vietjet Air. Uh, they are looking for 8 or 20 captains as well as uh, first officers. The base salary, yes, it's quite low. It's uh, around 5000 for the captains and around uh, 3000 for the first officers. Uh, so we got in touch with the chief pilot of this airline and asked regarding the salaries and if it's uh, possible to, well, to live there <laughs> for this kind of salary. And they informed us that with all the allowances and overtimes, so they get uh, captains up to ten thousand dollars and first officers up to five thousand. Uh, the roster there is quite friendly. It's uh, six weeks on, two weeks off. The environment, well, it's Vietnam. It's quite beautiful country actually. Well, it's different from India. <laughs> Uh, so uh, the contract is one year extendable, so you can go there, you can try it. Uh, of course, it's also uh, quite friendly for the captains with uh, uh, lower than 1,000 hours on time. Uh, the salary would be less, however, it's a perfect opportunity to earn uh, more hours, to gain more hours. Because the more hours you have, the more experience you have, the better salary you will receive, maybe in, in Europe. So. Okay, so now we're talking about the Middle East. This is like the dream contract that uh, we had recently. And lots of pilots are willing to join. However, a lot of the pilots are being accepted. So it's the company flying us uh, in Saudi Arabia. Again, the country is very challenging because uh, it's a very Muslim country. For example, if compared to United Arab Emirates, they are more open-minded over there. In, uh, in Saudi Arabia, it's, things are different. They even forbid, it, uh, forbid to build a snowman from the snow because you might uh, yeah. insult the prophet. Well, anyway, but the money in the, for this offer is very good. At the moment, they're looking for the captains only. Uh, but they also do have plans to to hire first officers. <coughs> <coughs> so the Rost, everything is about this uh, job offer <coughs> is perfect because it also has a commuting offer option. Actually, there are two packages. So one is like three weeks on, one week off, and then you have one month paid vacation. Or there is like 20, 21 days on and 10 days off per month well, without vacation. 
Well, after receiving 75 hours, uh, the salary, including all the bonuses that they provide, makes around $17,000 per month. Again, uh, you would be living uh, in a closed compound only for the expat uh, people working in Saudi Arabia, especially for, uh, for their pilots. Uh, however, they do take very good care about their um, pilots working there. They value them, they pressure them very much. Um, because the, as you can see, the contract is for five years. And of course, if you want to stay and if they want to stay you with them, uh, they would extend this contract to you forever. Uh, the thing about this offer is that uh, now uh, next week, at the beginning of next week, we are having a screening for 820 captains uh, in Vilnius, uh, which, uh, co which will consist of the interview, the technical interview on 820 and also the SIM check. Uh, so if anybody of you want to come, we still have several slots available. Uh, they do not cover the flight tickets and uh, the accommodation, however, Vilnius is just a couple of hours away from Prague. But we also have another idea with uh, FlyNAS. For example, if we could collect at least 20, 25 captains who want to participate in the screening, we can come and do the screening here so that you don't have to travel anywhere to pay for the tickets and to pay for the accommodation. I believe that we would uh, receive some help on booking the simulator here and we could do the scene check over here. But of course, it's not one, two pilots that we need. We need them 20 because uh, the people who are checking, uh, who are doing the interviews, they're coming all the way from Saudi Arabia. So of course, they want to see a decent number of candidates coming here. So. Well, this is uh, one of our freshest uh, offers. It's for Jazeera Airways. At this point, they are looking for the first officers, uh, and they are offering the permanent contract. Uh, the salary, the basic salary, is around five thousand dollars, but uh, as uh, well the same as with the uh, Via Jet. However, this case, in this case, it's not for the captains up to ten thousand. It's for the first officers. So it's a quite uh, well, it's a quite great offer. Uh, the minus is that the roster is non-commuting. Uh, however, there is a great uh, benefit package. It's a uh, accommodation allowance. Uh, it's not included in the basic salary, of course. A car allowance, uh, relocation allowance, uh, education allowance, and also Kuwait is a tax-free zone. So what you see here, you will get into your account. Uh, so uh, the requirements uh, 1,000 on type it's a minimum and 2,000 total time uh, the last flight should be within the last six months uh, so it's a quite a great opportunity uh, well maybe you could discuss it with your colleagues uh, who have more well hours on type and maybe they would like to try it because the next screening uh, would be in the middle of uh, February in Istanbul, uh, so they're welcome to apply. And jobs in Africa. <coughs> <coughs> well, uh, we are also cooperating with Ethiopian Airlines. Uh, they are looking for B737 uh, and G and other uh, c captains for the other types. Uh, we'll start from this one. Uh, the salary is uh, 6,500. Uh, it's the basic plus the bonuses. Every six months you'll get uh, almost uh, 4,000 dollars a bonus. Per diem swan duty would be uh, 60 dollars. And the roster is uh, uh, well. Actually, a lot of pilots were happy about the roster. 20 days on, uh, 10 days off, so you can go back and forth uh, between the countries. Uh, accommodation is now provided, mm. but well, it's Africa and it's Ethiopia, so there shouldn't be any problems with uh, finding a good, inexpensive accommodation there. Uh, also, as I mentioned, they are looking for the uh, other rated captains for the Dash Q400, they are captains and TRIs, uh, 777, B757767. <coughs> seven, seven, uh, the sal Well, you can see here the salaries. It's quite different, uh, and the per diem is uh, the same uh, for the old types. 
Okay, so it's your, the presentation is over because <coughs> at the moment these are the, the main and the most attractive job offers that we have. Of course, our sales team is working constantly on uh, getting new clients. Of course, there are high seasons, there are low seasons in our clients that uh, were just fired the pilots for the low season, now they are recruiting pilots for the high season again. So actually my suggestion is that uh, we would like to have your CVs, of course, of those who are interested to receive all the updates on the job offers, pilot job offers that we have, uh, because we would just enter you into our da database and every week, every month you would just receive the newsletters uh, with the latest, uh, the most fresh job offers that we have. And of course, if, uh, uh, if you just can tell us if you would like to receive this presentation so that uh, we can send it to Jan so he can forward to you so that you can have all the numbers and all the requirements, think about these offers and of course try to, to apply. And of course, if you have any questions at the moment, so you are welcome to ask them because we're here to answer them. Okay. Was it so informative or was it so boring? Why nobody is asking <laughs> anything? You know, uh, the main deal that I believe is uh, just there are just few guys who are comply with your conditions. I mean, out of first and second officers or the captains. So I believe that there are so many guys over here in this room who are interested in uh, the information concerning how's the screening, how's basically the process, how's the job, how's the prognosis let's say in five, ten years of the aviation because mm. I believe that there are so many guys who are not decided to become pilots because they, aren't, they don't know what was going wrong. Mm. How's the condition basically because uh, they don't have the ATPLs yet so then they are building up our hours and uh, they don't have any idea how's the screening process, how's the medical pr process is coming, is, it, is this simulator hard or not? What they are what they are requirements requirements for the uh, for the simulator? Could you give us just a couple yes, couple of ideas about of that? Course. So of course, uh, first of all, you all the young guys they could see the salaries, the differences. So they already can decide if uh, it's worth becoming a pilot or if it's, it's not. Uh, regarding the prospects for the future, of course, especially the Asian market in China, they are expanding like crazy and there is shortage of pilots and uh, <coughs> more and more pilots are needed. Of course the problem is that uh, mostly captains are needed and not too many uh, companies are providing the upgrade program. But for example at this moment we have this program with Lionier who provide the upgrade program. Uh, regarding the screenings that you asked, it, it, it's difficult to answer if, it's dif if it's the screening is difficult or easy because if you know everything then of course it's going to be easy for you. Um, well, for example, we know that well, when there is a SIM check for, for whatever, even for the first officer, they check all the stressful situations. It's not that they only uh, tell you to take off and then to land the plane and that's it. Of course, there will be one engine down, two engines down, bomb on the plane, and all the most stressful situations uh, because they want to see how you react and how you make the, the right decisions. Uh, the medical check, <coughs> yes, in China the medical check is, is really difficult because what is accepted here in, in Europe, for example, glasses or eyes, laser eye surgery might not be accepted in China. Uh, the other thing that pilots often are afraid of in China is that uh, when you have to uh, go scan, they inject you with some kind of medicine which is not approved here in Europe. And well, somehow they feel uncomfortable, you know, because something is injected into your body. Well, but somehow they, they survive, they do live. What else? <laughs> uh, for example, uh, with uh, <coughs> Saudi Arabia, with flying ass case, it's a medical, but it's not um, it's not a pilot's medical, but it's medical examination in general. So, for example, even if you would be going there to work as a office manager, you still would have to undergo the medical check uh, in order to receive the Saudi working visa. And again, they are checking just everything. It's the eyes and bones and everything inside. But again, everything is possible. and. There is nothing to be scared of, and so if you're already on the way of becoming a pilot, it's 
my suggestion of course is to choose the, the right type rating because it's really important. Uh, the moment we can see that uh, Airbus A320 is like the most popular as you could see from the job offers that we have. There were only few like for, for Boeings and even fewer for Embraer or something like that. So, well, if I was personally to become a pilot, I, I think I would choose an 8320 type rating. So it's a promising job, it's an interesting job. Of course, uh, to, to get employed into like more serious and big airlines, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, for example, Turkish Airlines, because they are part of Lufthansa. So the screenings are really, really, really tough. Uh, what we have heard from the pilots who, who tried to participate, some of them passed, some of them didn't. Uh, they test, well, just really sometimes the logical things uh, during the screening. For example, all the pilots meet who come for the screening one, one day, and everybody gets an envelope with some card inside. And inside there are several cards with adjectives, like for example, aggressive, easygoing, talkative. And then there are some other pilots that you see for the first time and you have to give every pilot a card with a matching word, even though you don't know them personally. So I don't know what does this test, but this is the part of uh, Turkish Airlines screening. Another thing we know that they were asked to make an S letter from the rope with the eyes closed. I don't know, it's quite easy, I guess, but maybe somebody failed, I don't know. <laughs> but this is what we have heard. Of course, in order to start your career after getting a license, is the main thing is to have the certain amount of hours on time in order to get your first job. In this case, in most cases, it's 500 hours. Well, all the airlines, if you don't have 500 on time, you can have uh, 495. No, you have to have 500 hours. The line training program that we will actually start our presentation from, yes, it is expensive. Well, I believe you already know if you started this process, it's not the cheapest one. You will have to put invest uh, money in yourselves in order for it to repay you in the future. Well, if you have to think about this, if you have a chance to do so uh, or not, because, uh, well, I don't want to scare you, but there are a lot of pilots that send their CVs and uh, they are asking for advice because they invested a lot of money just to get a, ty a license type rating, you know, to get some hours and it's still not enough because they had some money at first, they started flying, but then they didn't, so they lost their currency and now they again can apply it for the each time for the different reason. So you really have to think about it to make a plan for yourself. Uh, of course, uh, there is a thing uh, as a luck. Uh, you can get employed with lesser hours and then get employed somewhere else uh, to gain more hours. And then you might reach uh, 6,000 hours uh, when you're 30. Everything is possible. Actually, we have uh, pilots from all over the world with such a different experience. We have uh, quite older captains who are actually flying their whole life and they have like 6,000 hours. And then we have guys who are 44 years old and they have uh, around 18,000 hours. It's, it looks impossible. How can you have so much hours? Well, it really depends where you are flying. So you have to think about it uh, and then well, decide if it is worth it, if it's your dream and if it's worth pursuing. Yeah, because you know, if you, when you're a pilot, it's not that you go to the office 9 o'clock in the morning and then you finish at, at 5 and then you have a weekend off. It's different. You would be relocated to different bases. Uh, you will be called in the middle of the night. So this is kind of, of, of the job. And of course, if you're looking to that and if you feel that you can uh, manage this then yes it's, it's a job for you and it's a well-paid job actually it's a really interesting job it's a cosmopolitan job you meet lots of people you see lots of countries uh, you gain lots of experience uh, learning different cultures well I believe the captains the actual captains would, would uh, be able to, yes, to provide <coughs> more details about this job uh, rather than us. Are you, are you thinking here in case that uh, somebody will enter your uh, initial operation experience training, 
it was like for 20,000 euros, I believe, or something like that. Uh, sorry, could you repeat your question? Uh, the initial operation training, is it light training? When you finish your ITPL and you get a license, so you will have to pay some amount, like 20,000 uh, US dollars or euros yes, yes. for light training. Yes, but, but as I said, we accept only for the type rating. So basically, first of all, they need uh, to put type rating on. Yes. And then pay next 20,000 euros for those 500 hours. Yes. yes. To have a chance to be placed on market. Yes. yes. That's it. And uh, my question is, are you taking care of, um, personally of those guys who are interested in you? Like if there will be... If there will be somebody who will pay those twenty thousand dollars to build up five hundred hours, so are you gaining them job? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So you will take care of them. Yes. Of yes. Course. If they don't, if uh, we are not able to provide the jobs, uh, or actually they can find the job on their own if they have a better chance of. Uh, well, the, a lot of guys uh, chose another airline, so well, maybe we can offer some of the offers that we presented at the moment, but they just find another jobs. And it is good for them, so if not, they just don't have to pay the payment yeah, at no, this point. You know, my point is, like, if I will decide to pay those 20,000 uh, euros extra, yes. so... 50? 50, 50. 50, yes, so it's, it's a down payment. No, it's quite hard to develop <laughs> just 500 hours, so in pilot's career is the hardest one. And uh, if there is a program or do you have any idea how, how it's to... Is there any chance to build up those 500 hours somewhere else, or do you have any experience about? Well, the real, uh, there are, of course, are the airlines uh, had experience with Srivijaya here. It's somewhere again, somewhere in Indonesia. Uh, the price, of course, of, but of course, again, you have to pay. The price was a little bit smaller than, than ours, but the quality was not that good. And so, for example, when we had the first ever screening and selection for, for this program, those guys who failed the screening here in Vilnius for, for, for hours for Small Planet Airlines, they went to Srivijaya and they were accepted immediately. So I believe it tells something about the quality already that they, they are giving. Of course, they, they will log 500 hours on the logbook, they will have that. Of course, earlier, earlier it was different, earlier it was different because uh, Pilots were getting their the uh, the 500 the first 500 hours easier. Uh, they were promoted by the companies, of course, like uh, airlines like uh, KLM, like Lufthansa. They, they do have the private schools and they they provide that ones. Uh, but those who who didn't manage to get into Lufthansa flight school, of course, they have to think on their own how to collect those 500 hours on time. Uh, can those 500 hours include simulated time, or it just, uh, is it just aircraft time? It's block hours on aircraft. Because, you know, uh, simulated hours, they don't count when you want to apply for the job. Mm -hmm. If the requirement says that you need to have 1,000 total hours and 500 on type, the simulated hours, they don't count. Uh, same thing uh, mm -hmm. goes to last flight. Uh, sometimes yes. we have uh, problems because yeah. when we ask when was your last flight and doesn't matter captains, first officers, they just say <coughs> yesterday and uh, then we ask to send the logbook and actually yesterday was the sim check. So the last flight, it's the requirement of the last actual flight on the aircraft with passengers. <coughs> Okay, any more questions? Uh, do you also focus on business jets, like type rated first officers for Citation Bravo, for example? Or yeah. just airliners? Yes, of course, we do have, uh, we are working with some of uh, business jet uh, airlines, quite a few, because of course we are mostly interested in larger airlines, but of course we do have some clients. Uh, so recently, the recent requirements was for Hawker, for Challenger 604, captains and first officers. Yes, of course, we, but, but yeah, of course there are sometimes requests for, for different one and for Cessna as well. So if you would like to receive our offers in the future, so you're welcome to send your CV and you will be in our database and you will receive all the information regularly. Okay, so how many are coming to the screening? Final screening <laughs> next week. 
Okay, well then, thank you very much thank for you. coming and for having us here. And we hope to cooperate to maybe with you in the future. And to receive lots of CVs. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Doufám, že jste se dozvěděli to, co vás zajímalo všechno. A teď bych vám jenom ve stručnosti chtěl povědět, jakým způsobem můžeme pomoct my jako celá TC. Konkrétním kategoriím vás, kteří tady jste, protože, jak jsem říkal, jsou tady osoby, které mají poněkud větší nálet. Vidím tady lidi z řad kapitánů ČSA i z Airbusu 330, kteří mají velký nálet a kterým, pokud možno, můžeme taky nějakým způsobem pomáhat. Vidím tady i osoby, které už se účastnily našich career dayů a podobně, což jsem rád, že se nám, že se nám vrací ta, že o to máte zájem. Ale je tady také pár osob, které jsou tady úplně poprvé a kteří, které neznají vůbec CATC jako takové. Tak jenom velice stručně, kdo nezná CATC, my jsme byli původně od založení ČSA integrální součástí společnosti ČSA. V podstatě až v roce 2012 došlo k separaci od ČSA, no vyspadáme pod řízení letového provozu a v roce 2014 jsme se přejmenovali z Czech Airlines Training Center na Czech Aviation Training Center. A jako výcvikové středisko se ne, nevěnujeme pouze pilotním výcvikům, ale proto se to jmenuje Aviation Training Center, takže veškerému leteckému personálu počínaje tedy piloty přes palubní průvočí až po mechaniky na letadlech. A samozřejmě se věnujeme i jazykovým kurzům, jak co se týče obecné angličtiny, tak co se týče té letecké. Poskytujeme to na tyhle ty všechny letouny, co se týče Airbusu 330, tak tam je to zejména pro ty technické výcviky a pro výcviky palubních personálů. Výcviky, které vám můžeme nabídnout jako pilotům, jsou jednak up initial výcviky, což je pro některé z vás, třeba z řad studentů odborných škol, kteří přemýšlí o tom, jestli být piloty nebo ne. Potom typové kvalifikace, to je klasika ve světě těch výcvikových organizací. A pokud někdo má třeba typovou kvalifikaci na Airbus 320 a rozhodne se jít ku příkladu do společnosti Vizer, kde většinou nepožadují typovou kvalifikaci, ale požadují zase Jet Orientation Course, tak to je něco, co jim tady taky můžeme poskytnout. Na čem piloty cvičíme? Máme tady plně pohyblivé simulátory Airbusu 320, Boeingu 737 Classic a také Boeingu 737 Nové generace. Takže jenom ve stručnosti to takhle projedu, abych vás tady příliš dlouho nezdržoval. A také cvičíme piloty na typ ATR. Máme tady fix base simulátor, přesně řečeno FNPT, čili trenažer letových postupů a navigačních postupů. A pak tady máme taky takzvané, takzvané skleněné peklo, což je Airbus Procedure Trainer, kde si můžete uh, trénovat postupy. Uh, je to, co by jsou část typové kvalifikace pro Airbus 320. Tak, jak můžeme pomoct uh, zkušenějším pilotům s náletem typovou kvalifikací, kteří se chtějí uká ucházet o práci v zahraničí? To je náš screening preparation program, který trvá jeden, maximálně dva dny, kde vás naše examinátorka jazyková přeskouší z angličtiny. To přeskoušení je písemné a ústní, jak to bývá asi u většiny screeningů. Někteří z vás už jste asi screeningy zažili, tak, tak víte, co se tak většinou po vás chce. 
A můžete si tady u nás v tomto programu vyzkoušet i takzvané kompas testy, kde se většinou, většinou testuje vaše abstraktní myšlení, numerický test a součástí toho je tak, i takzvaný press test, kde musíte pod časovou zátěží vykazovat schopnost syntézy, analýzy a podobně. A to bych přenechal spíš poli psychologů, do toho bych se asi moc nemotal. A hlavně, co je pro vás důležité, pro vás zkušenější, kteří byste chtěli jít na ten screening, to je tady simulace screeningu na plně pohyblitém simulátoru. Ta, ten nácvik je čtyřhodinový a součástí toho je právě nácvik situací, které se většinou dávají při tom screeningu, čili vysazení motoru těsně po vzletu, požár motoru za letu a tak dále. Prostě to, co, si můžete, co se vám může hodit při tom screeningu. Na požádání je možnost dohodnout i pohovor s naší dvorní psycholožkou, paní Klocovou. Tady jenom máte takový příklad toho, co například je součástí toho kompas testu, jak to sleduje, ty schopnosti syntézy, analýzy, numerické schopnosti, rychlost reakcí a podobně. Pokud je tady někdo, kdo má ATPL Frozen, což znamená, že má licenci obchodního pilota s doložkou pro létání podle přístrojů na více motorových letounech a teorii ATPL absolvovanou a chtěl být ku příkladu do aerolinky typu Travel Service nebo, nebo Vizer, tak můžeme nabídnout jednak ten Jet, Ori Jet Orientation Course, o kterém už jsem mluvil, a potom také kurz součinnosti vícečlené posádky, který je už standardní, si, standardním požadavkem u většiny leteckých společností. Samozřejmě ta typová kvalifikace a pokud už máte tu typovku, tak potom ten screening preparation program, o kterém jsem před chvílí mluvil, to je něco, co vám taky můžeme nabídnout. A pokud je tady někdo, kdo má zájem o to pilotní povolání, tak jsou to naše app initial výcviky, co vám můžeme nabídnout, jednak MPL neboli Multicrew Pilot License a jednak náš produkt ATPL+. Součástí obou těchto výcviků, které jsou určeny pro osoby bez zkušeností v letectví, je i screening, ale není to ten samý screening, jaký absolvují samozřejmě profesionální piloti při přijímacích pohovorech do aeroliní. Jedná se o screening, kde si zkoušíte taky ty kompas testy, také tu angličtinu a simulátor, který ale neskouší, jak se umíte chovat po vysazení motoru, ale jakým způsobem zvládáte multitasking, čili více činností na jednu. Ale o těchto těch výcvicích bude samostatný otevřený den zřejmě teď někdy na jaře, takže když budete sledovat naše webové stránky, případně Aeroweb, tak tam se o tom také dovíte. A pokud byste měli nějaké dotazy, tak je můžete pokládat buď to teď přímo, anebo se nám ozvat e-mailem na naší centrální adresu info.zavináč.cz a pak nám to bude rozdistribuováno. A pokud byste se chtěli ozvat přímo mě, nebo kolegům Petrovi Možnému, nebo Janu Břežanskému, tak také můžete, tady jsou na nás kontakty. Takže já doufám, že jsem vás moc nezdržel, chtěl jsem to vzít co, co nejrychleji a děkuji vám za pozornost. Pokud máte nějaké otázky, tak se klidně ptejte. A to je z mé strany asi všechno. Takže jestli, jestli otázky nejsou, tak vám přeju hezký zbytek večera a děkuji vám, že jste přišli.